Yeah, great to see everybody. I'm excited to kick off the 2024 uh, spring football season and obviously begin building the foundations for our football team. Every season, it all starts over again. Everything begins new from replacing seniors, um, for us excellent players, both on and off the field, who established a culture uh, that really uh, emphasized and lived our core values. Um, we had an excellent group of men. and. Uh, I wish those guys all the best as they're continue, continuing to chase their dreams. We have eight players in Indianapolis right now for the combine. I believe that's a Mizzou record for most players in attendance. But on top of those guys, we've also got a great amount of players uh, who will be participating in their pro day, I believe, on March 22nd. They're really excited for their future. and and. Um, you know, can't say enough great things about those guys. But again, with any new season, you have to start over and, and uh, find ways to build this year's team. You know, with success comes opportunities for people associated with our program. And everyone's journey is uniquely different and uniquely theirs, and I can't control it all. You know, my mom taught me to believe the best in people. And so uh, in regards to Coach Baker, Coach Peoples, Coach Witty, Jake Olson, um, and including our athletic director, Desiree Reed Francois, moving on to other opportunities, we wish them the absolute best. Um, and we appreciate and thankful for their contributions that they made to our program and to this university. Um, but, but really what's important is now and the people that are in this building and the people that are in this organization and, and the opportunity that they have now moving forward. You know, we have to, like I started, uh, said, we have to start laying the foundation for this year. Um, and in order to go further faster, uh, to, in order to have more success than we've had previously, we have to start laying, uh, start over in laying the foundation. We spent the previous uh, five weeks with Coach Russell and his Elite Edge program. We spent last week reviewing our core values and this week we'll start with our spring goals. I'm excited about the additions to our staff. Corey Batoon, our defensive coordinator, has an extensive background in coaching defense, um, whether that's been at Central Missouri, Arkansas State, Ole Miss, Hawaii, Liberty, or South Alabama. Um, he's been associated with great defensive football play. I was really um, excited after his interview, not only because of his expertise in, in understanding the back end and tying that in with the front end, but also because of, of his technical abilities coaching the safety position in an area that I know that we need to improve. Um, he'll do a tremendous job coaching not only the safeties, but also making sure that death row defense doesn't lose uh, any of the tenacity that it's built, uh, any of the aggressive nature that we have, uh, but also finding ways to improve. Brian Early is our edge coach. Um, he's a similar background to us, former high school football coach uh, who got an opportunity to coach college football and has, taken, and has made the most of it. Um, developed a lot of great pass rushers and uh, defensive linemen at Houston. Uh, had defensive players of the year at Arkansas State uh, and has re really been a great addition uh, to us so far. We also added Jacob uh, Euro as defensive analyst from Hawaii. Um, he'll be our lead defensive analyst and somebody who has experience not only coaching, uh, coordinating, but, but uh, coaching uh, defensive football at a high level. We'll add a few more analysts uh, throughout the, the spring, and we'll, I'll make those uh, announcements as they get um, formalized or finalized. I'm going to sneeze at some point. I'm going to keep fighting through it. Nope. There it is. You know, this is the first opportunity I've had to speak on our mid-year tr transfers who've joined our football team. Uh, I thought our staff did an excellent job of going out and finding the pieces that we needed to add to our uh, team. Uh, probably the lead begins with Caden Green, offensive tackle from Kansas City. 
um, coming to us from Oklahoma. He played in 11 games last year, had five starts. Is a guy that we think has position flexibility, but will we'll begin the, the uh, spring term as a left tackle. Uh, very excited about his length, speed, uh, athleticism. Also excited about his tenacity. Uh, and it's always fun to see all the talk about him on Twitter. Marcus Carroll, running back from Georgia State. Uh, first team all Sun Belt Conference. You know, we're going to be replacing uh, the SEC's leading rusher, so obviously we, that was a position that we had of need. First team all Sun Belt Conference, uh, single season rushing record uh, at Georgia State with 1,350 yards in 12 games. Um, but not only st uh, st stopped there, we added Nate Noel from Appalachian State, has rushed for 3,000 yards in his time, uh, started 25 games in his career there. Um, so very excited about uh, those guys that we were able to add um, on the offensive side of the football. We also added J.R. Blood, a quarterback from Southern. Um, his brother of Daniel Blood um, was a starting quarterback at Southern University last year. So on the offensive side of the football, I believe those are the additions that we've had so far throughout the, through the portal. Uh, felt like we addressed the significant needs that we have uh, and, and, and very excited to see what those guys' additions to our program look like throughout the spring. On the defensive side of the ball, um, obviously we knew with the loss of, of our two corners, we needed to add some depth at the corner position. Very fortunate to get Toriano Pride uh, to come back. Uh, corner from St. Uh, from St. Louis uh, has played uh, over 500 snaps in 26 games, three starts at Clemson. So very excited about his addition there. We added a couple more players on the back end with Corey Flag, uh, sorry, with Caleb Flag, and with Gerald Lacey to walk on safety or sorry, two safeties uh, coming from. Uh, Stephen F. Austin and coming from Houston Christian. Those guys have played a lot of football. Well, Caleb has played some football. Gerald just got started. Uh, really needed to add some depth at the D-line position. So two transfers that we brought in at the DN position, Zion Young from Michigan State's played over 20 games, and Darius Smith from Georgia played over 16 games. Those guys add length and size that we need in that room and the ability to rush the passer. We also felt like we needed to add some D-tackle depth, uh, losing three starter or three rotational starters for us. We added Chris McClellan, who appeared in 25 games at Florida, and Sterling Webb, who played in all 14 of New Mexico State's conference championships game this year, making eight starts. We needed to add some depth at linebacker and a potential to start a standout performer, Corey Flagg, who played in 43 games and 23 starts at Miami. Uh, very excited for him, um, you know, having two starters uh, uh, leave with Chad Bailey and, and Tyron Hopper adding Corey Flagg was huge for us. And then Brady Holtman, uh, who transferred in from Wyoming, very excited to see what he can do for us. And then we needed to add uh, a punter, and we uh, added Orion Phillips, um, punter from Murray State, also from Australia. Very good. It's an experienced group with well over 100 career starts amongst them. Um, it's going to be great for them to get acclimated to what we're trying to do here. Um, and then to for them to show us what their strengths are and figure out how we can uh, find value for them in their role this spring. As with every spring, we have clear specific spring goals for our players, but overall for us, so there's a reminder, spring is about individual player development. We are, uh, we are about these guys getting better. Um, each one of these players has, have been given an assigned task by their coaching staff, and we're excited for those guys to fundamentally technically and schematically improve throughout the spring. The second one is to ID the strengths and weaknesses of our squad. What do we do really well? What are the things that we have to improve on? And then we have really five months to attack it. And then the last one is to continue to define just us. What's important to us is our team, uh, this group, and connect the brotherhood together in order for us to be uh, a more unified unit. So with that, I'll open it up for questions, um, but we're excited to kick off uh, the spring. Actually, I won't open it up for questions. There are two players that will be out because of injury. Uh, Isaac Thompson and Sam Horn will miss the, the remainder of the spring. Uh, I, Isaac is recovering from um, his injury in the summer. Sam um, had to have Tommy John surgery. Um, the, the great thing about Tommy John surgery is it's a, an operation that is going to allow for full recovery. Um, and that timetable is unknown. 
Um, but our goal for Sam Horn is to be 100% healthy when he comes back. And healthy for him means throwing 96 off the bump and throwing 50-yard touchdowns. So when he is both of those, then we'll have him ready to play uh, football for us. But uh, first and foremost, he's a, a unique football and baseball talent. we got to get him healthy. So that's the injury updates. And then we do have um, – this will be my first – um, press conference and then I'll address everybody post spring. I want to give you all more access to our coordinators and coaches this spring to allow you uh, the opportunity to ask them direct questions um, and for them to, gr to grow in the experience of dealing with the media. So please be nice to them. Um, and then as always, we'll have access to players. Uh, but for me, get your questions in now. All right, because after this, I'll see you the Wednesday of uh, March 20th, probably. Eli, how does, with Sam being out, how do you have to change Brady's responsibility? I know he doesn't get hit, but yeah. just wear and tear during spring and between now and Um. Yeah, I think that's one thing about Brady is he, he he's such a pleaser. He wants to do everything. we got to make sure he understands to uh, not overdo it. Um, but that's where you got Aiden Glover and, and um, uh, uh, JR and Tommy. Um, and then, you know, we'll, we'll see. I think there's a potential for us, depending on what the diagnosis is uh, for t time, you know, potentially we take somebody out of the portal um, uh, if the opportunity presents itself to better the team. Does that mean you're not ruling out that Sam could play football next season? Next season, well, I mean, I don't know. It depends how far we go, but no, I mean, I'm, yeah, I, I don't anticipate that he would play next year. We that we uh, elected to take the full uh, surgery, and that, and you know, there was an opportunity there that you could have potentially not done a full reconstruction and been back quicker for football, but it leaves some to be desired on the baseball end. And again, Sam is, you know, I think he at one point he was considered a top thirty prospect for the 25 uh, draft. So, I mean, our goal, number one goal is to get him back to that first. Uh, and then we'll see that that will positively affect football too. You obviously turning the page now to a new season. How do you kind of balance as a program, you know, the success that you guys had last year and balancing, you know, turning that page? Yeah, honestly, I don't think we've had to, to deal with that at all. Um, I think whenever you have enough um, ripples in your organization or brotherhood through changes, it creates a sense of urgency. I know for me personally it has, and I think for our team um, it's done the same thing. I think there's also been that ripple effect of being able to watch um, our players compete in the Senior Bowl and at the Combine, and there's a sense of it's my turn now. Uh, it's my opportunity now to go achieve what I've always dreamed about achieving. Um, but they also realize that that didn't just wish to happen. Uh, our, our players that are at the combine or that are getting ready for pro day, they work their butt off for a year. We're completely dedicated and bought into, hey, if I come back this season and dedicate myself, I can put myself in a position to play at an elite level. And you look at the, the, the conversations with Darius Robinson right now um, and what he did for his draft stock at the Senior Bowl, uh, not only him, but Chris Abrams Drain, Ennis Rakestraw, Cody Sh uh, Schrader, you know, Javon Foster. Um, Tyron Hopper, these guys are going to continue to rise up the boards because not only have they shown good tape, but they also show good work ethic. And I think our team is seeing that. And whether that's been a commitment to nutrition um, with Joseph Charleston or a commitment to doing extra um, with Brady Cook and Luther Burden and Theo Weiss um, or Christian Williams, you're seeing that next wave of leaders and setting the tone for what the standard is. Um, you know, if you get caught around patting yourself on the back for last year, you're going to be really disappointed. And so I don't think uh, anybody is is sitting around staring at the Cotton Bowl trophy. All right. So we'd like for everybody to come celebrate Saturday night at the basketball game for it, but that's not our focus right now. I mean, you're in these early days with this group. Are what traits are you already seeing emerge too early for that? Or what are you seeing from this group so far? Well, they'll each have to, to kind of piece that together. Um, but the traits that we want to continue to see are the core values of always compete, to do it better than it's ever been done before, to build trust and respect, um, 
amongst the brotherhood, to do more than what's expected, um, to enjoy the journey. And, and those things that we are seeing, I mean, our Saturday morning optional workouts have been phenomenal. Um, to see the number of people, I actually can't say see, I haven't seen, um, but to hear about the number of people that have shown up to those has been incredible. To see or to hear about the number of times that these guys are already throwing extra. To walk down and ask Brady, have you seen the sack tape? Yeah, I watched it two weeks ago. There's six sacks that I took that I got to take off the tape. And then this, you know, this clip, this clip, I've got to make sure I'm finding my check down sooner. Or Luther Burton, what are your goals for next year? I mean, these guys have already braced the things that it took us three years to really build. And so, again, you want to get further faster. When you reread a book, you don't skip chapters. You read it faster through, you know, a better interpretation because you've already read it before, and that's the hope that what we're doing this year. Yeah, I mean, the first thing we look for is low ego, high output. Um, both of these guys, from an ego standpoint, are very much open to doing what we've done here in the past and adding value to it. Um, and then I think the second thing is you want to see great teachers. Uh, when you go back and check these guys' resumes, the amount of development that they've had at their position uh, is a reflection of not only great teachers, but great evaluators in the recruiting aspect. And so I think those guys provide that value. I think the other th two things that, that – uh, or the other thing that about both of them that's unique is that they embrace who they are. They're not trying to replace anybody. They're just trying to be uniquely them. Um, and then they're going to embrace their role and add value through the way that they add value. Um, so it's been really good. I think we've opened up a brand new corridor to recruiting in Hawaii with both uh, Corey and Jacob. And so I look forward to reaping those benefits, mainly by making some unofficial visits over to Hawaii um, to help us. On basis, most standpoint, is Corey likely to run a similar system? Or? Yeah, we are. We, yeah, we are. We, we're going to base out of a 425. You know, everybody has their own um, uh, fingerprints when they paint, right? Styles. Um, and so Corey's going to call the game the way he stylistically he sees it and has always seen it. But, you know, if we call bench front, which is a three technique to the boundary, bench front instead of whatever he called it in the past, we're going to assimilate to what we've done here. Really similar to what, what Kirby, what I asked Kirby to do. There's going to be some changes naturally. We changed the boundary in position uh, to a joker. We're going to call it a joker because it fits some of the things that he does. Um, but there's going to be a whole lot of carryover. Um, you know, I want them to be uniquely them, but I want them to make sure that our players' um, learning is prioritized. We talk about it a lot, preference over performance. You know, it, what's best for our players and our team's performance. Would you do something similar to what Blake did when he first came? Blake said he learned the system that was in place. Was it kind of going to be how much we're going to teach the players? No, he's going to learn the system first and then figure out what schematic changes we want to do. I thought you were referring to wearing cleats and running around like a madman crazy with a shirt off. No, he ain't doing that. Coach, with the offensive line, is that built up over the next few months? Just what are you looking to see from some of those options, especially on the left side, over the next few weeks here? Yeah, we're, we're looking for the best combo of five. What's the, what's the best five look at, look like? Um, you know, obviously, we've got a pretty strong three with, with um, Connor Cam and Armand. But you're having to replace, I think, nearly 50 career starts, maybe 100 combined. Um, between uh, Javon and, and X. And so, you know, that's going to be a tough task. You're not going to replace that in day one. Obviously, it was a, a good start to get Caden here. Um, but you've got other guys, Brent Salish, Javon Richardson, um, Logan Reichert, Tristan Wils or, uh, uh, um, Wilson. Um, why is his first name escaping me here? Um, yeah, Tristan. I was thinking of the other one. All right. Two Wilsons is a bad deal for me, okay? Uh, Tristan, um, you know, Mitchell Walters could slide in there and play some. Caleb Pyfriend's moved in. So we have a lot of opportunities there. It's just going to be about figuring out who the five best working together are. What lessons are there for the, the newer running backs to be drawn from, you know, Cody's story and probably less his personal story and more the approach that he took and how he got to be a successful doer? Yeah, you know, we actually talked about it. Um, Wednesday, 
when we were pointing out our core values, people who lived them, I think always compete, right? Um, Cody came in eighth and didn't BCD, didn't blame, complain, or defend. Um, he just went to work every day to try to be better today than he was yesterday. And doing the simple things really well adds up over time, right? Just do a little bit better and do it a little bit better, and all of a sudden you got a lot. And so that's uh, that's the approach that we talk, talk to our whole team about. Number one, uh, adopt the core values of always compete. Uh, be better today than you were yesterday. Don't let circumstances or perception um, define who you want to be. Um, and then, you know, approach every day with a, a competitive spirit. Speaking of approach, do you notice any difference in Brady where this is unquestionably his team, whereas a year ago at this time, they're, I, I know he approached it like it was his team, but I don't yeah. know if everybody outside. Um, I don't think every since – Brady hasn't changed really since week three after we beat K-State. He's kind of been the same consistent person, um, not looking over his shoulders, just being uniquely him. He is driving a much nicer car because of an NIL deal. Um, and I've seen a couple more commercials on, like, Instagram and stuff. Um, and so, you know, maybe we got to make sure he's not going to be a celebrity quarterback. But he's Mr. Consistent. Um, so I don't really worry about that part of it. You know, I don't think that he's, you know, approaching spring a whole lot different than, than how he approached bowl practice with something to prove. Coach Brad's building back real quick. When you look at Marcus Carroll, it's kind of similar to the to Cody Schrader, similar styles. Was that kind of the intent when you went in the portal? Uh, maybe he's someone who does something similar to Cody, or is it like he's the best available to us and he just happens to be a little similar to Cody? Yeah, I mean, I just think we were looking for the right fit, productive. Um, you know, Nate Noel's got a little bit of speed, not a little bit of speed, a lot of speed, and very familiar with our outside zone scheme. And then Marcus Carroll has a little bit of more size, has uh, played um, or, or been more of a durable back. Um, but I, I would say this, that doesn't discount Jamal Roberts or uh, T-Man or uh, anybody who wants to contribute. I mean, if we don't, if if our team hasn't learned their lesson from Cody Schrader two springs ago was the eighth man on the depth chart, nobody knew who he was, to starting week one of that that game. I mean, week one of fall camp or week one of the season. I mean, whoever ends up earning the job is going to earn the job. You know, much like we said last year, there's really no preconceived ideas. There is a lot of opportunities for players to figure out what their roles are going to be and how they fit. And we job of the coaches to fit them together. You're pretty confident Blake Craig is your kicker, or is that a competition to replace Harrison? How's that going? Uh, every position's a competition. Every position's a competition. I think Blake will have the first swing at it, pun intended. Um, but then after that, Nick Quadrini and Will Saffris. I mean, whoever consistently puts the ball through the uprights, um, and whether that's from an extra point or inside the 20s, um, to being as consistent as they can, as deep as they can. And what are the important things for you and your program in the next AD? Or is that something that you don't think about? It's not something I really think about. I, I don't have um, the, the things that I'm growing more and more as a leader is to invest in the things that I can control. And the things that I can't control, then the less I worry about them, the more I can focus on the things that I can control. Uh, I've got a lot of faith in uh, our president, who's been consistent with me since I've been here. Um, we've got a very strong board of curators uh, with great leadership. And uh, I know they'll pick the right people, the right person for the University of Missouri. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we recruited him. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we recruited him. Yeah, that's probably the single biggest loss, right? Leadership. Um, leadership, as we know, is neutral. It's not good or bad. It's, it's, um, it's got to be pushed one way or the other. And so there's a vacuum and void of leadership. The positives are I think there's a lot of people in that room. Um, who lead in a positive way and understand what that looks like. And I think that we were working, you know, as guys were getting dinged up and injured last year, we were working towards new guys stepping in. You know, you have Christian Williams, you have Chuck Hicks, you have Tristan Newsom who've played a lot. You have 
um, Johnny Walker, who has not only played a lot but performed at a high level on the biggest stage. You have uh, Brady Cook. You know, Connor Tolleson started for two years now. Theo Weiss is coming back. So I think there's plenty of positive people. You know, Chris Cray is uh, a guy that is consistently doing more than what's expected. Um, I think there's a lot of guys who are consistent in living the core values that it's their opportunity to now lead this football team. Yeah, I think it's it, it's uh, an advantage if we take attack it as competition. It's it's competition versus complacency, and which one are they going to be? And I think that's going to be the challenge for that room is, um, are they going to compete every single day to be better, or are they going to be complacent and say when the lights come on, we'll be good enough? Um, look, talk's cheap. You know, it, it's going to be about who's going to be about that action. Uh, and the start of one-on-ones, because I know there's a real hungry group of corners to prove themselves um, every single day in one-on-ones and in com combatives. And uh, I know that wide receiver, wide receiver room is going to have to meet that challenge head on if they're going to have the success that they think they're going to have. Coach, with those corners, who is the secondary at large, there's some, some starting jobs to focus. Who do you expect to see maybe by the top two who's going to camp You know, I, I think, again, all of them have a great opportunity. I think we would all be kidding ourselves if we didn't believe that Drayden Norwood was ahead of everybody else, just the amount of snaps that he's played and the consistency that he played. I mean, um, you know, Ennis was injured and dinged up throughout most of the year. And um, Drayden played a, a lot of good football for us. Marcus Clark, I think, was third on our team in interceptions. Toriano Pride is, is um, obviously transferring in with a lot of opportunity ahead of him. Um, you've got um, uh, Nick uh, LaRoche, uh, who you know redshirted last year. You got Shamar McNeil, who redshirted last year. Both of those guys were brought in here with the ability to play, and we knew they were. Um, you know, we'll be adding uh, sense of all in the in, in the summer. Um, we've also got uh, Jamarian Wayne uh, playing corner this spring, which is something that we're very excited to see what he can contribute. So there's plenty of guys over there with the opportunity to earn the position. Um, and that's going to be a really exciting spring. I think Coach Pogue is one of our best teachers and developers. Um, and I look forward to seeing what he's going to do with that room. I mean, when Coach Pogue got here, there was a lot of question marks about what that room was going to become. And he developed two really, really good players. Coach, I'm not a video game guy, but this okay. EA Sports yep. game is taking on a life of its own really? on social media. Yeah. Is that important for Mizzou to be in there and some of your players to be in the game? Is that something you hear about from in recruiting or anything like that? Well, I just saw where the top ten playbooks, Missouri's offense wasn't listed, which is absolutely insanity to me. Um, how Kirby Moore's offense isn't listed as top ten offense after going 11 and two with a quarterback who's ranked in the top nine in the 90s, and I think Luther's got one of the highest rankings on there. I mean, that would make sense that, that offense was the top ten. So no, I don't pay attention to it. <laughs> no, I think it's really important for us uh, any time that we can put in market our brand, right? Um, and so if you're going to have EA Sports, it's, it's not a complete game unless you tell the story of Mizzou football and, and the players that we have here. And obviously, I think it's a great opportunity for our guys to opt in, um, to receive money, receive a free game. You know, I think sometimes it's um, catch-22 when people are saying, well, it's, they're not being valued enough. Compared to what? Compared to not having the game and you're not able to opt in? where now you get an opportunity to be paid and get to play the game for free. So you know, I think sometimes um, opportunities have to be seized. Um, and as the game increases, then maybe there's opportunities for them to do more with it. But I think it's a great thing for college sports. As a guy who grew up playing college football on Sega Genesis, I'm excited for it to come back, although I don't know how to play on these new game consoles. You, uh, you alluded to it a little bit at the beginning, but I'm uh, just curious if your last, the last couple of years, if you can give us insight into your relationship with Desiree. And no matter who it is, if there's a change at the top, is that a challenge uh, in your position? 
Yeah, I mean, first, I think I had a great relationship with Desiree. Um, we worked well together um, to try to advance the not only the athletic department, but the University of Missouri football program. I think we accomplished that. Um, you know, no, I don't think it's a challenge to have somebody new come in. I think it's an opportunity. Um, I think with any situation, it's an opportunity to improve your current condition. If you look at uh, a new person coming in with strengths um, and how they're going to add value to what we're trying to build and what we're trying to accomplish. I would hope by now um, that it's really not about me um, at all. It's about how do we build Mizzou football to last for a long time um, as a premier place to come play college football. And whoever, um, and not only Mizzou football, but Mizzou athletics, you know, I want us to have the best of the best. Um, and that's from facilities to NIL to player uh, development, you know, to raise the standard. We're, we're the single uh, Division One playing football program in the state that has 8 million or so, 11 when you talk about um, surrounding areas. Like, the potential here is endless. And so for me, uh, an opportunity to work with somebody new um, is just that. It's an opportunity to improve the possibilities. And I would go back to my opening statement, no different than with Desiree, with Coach Baker, with Coach Peoples, Coach Witte, Coach Olson. Um, I valued my time with those people, but it's really not about them anymore. It's about us and what we're doing now on this new journey. And I'm not going to compare what's next with what was previous. It's just, it is what is. And so, um, no different than Corey Batoon and Brian Early and Coach uh, Jacob. Like, I'm excited about what this will be moving forward and the opportunity that we have to improve our condition. Because make no mistake about it, we got to get better. We got to improve. Um, that's, that's the name of the game, right? Nobody's patting ourselves on the back for losing two games last year. I, I know I'm not. I'm trying to figure out. How do you not turn the ball over in critical situations, you know, in order to give us a better chance to, to win? How do we stop quarterbacks? How do we, you know, in those two games, we didn't force a turnover. Like, those are things that we got to improve on. And uh, wh whoever and however we can do that, that's what's important to me. Twitter. But Twitter? Twitter, yeah. It, it seemed like there were some murmurings, at least online, that Kirby Moore had been rumored for join Kelly Blur staff at Alabama. I just wonder how much serious considerations may be there. Uh, just how do are have them on board? I'm going to let Kirby answer those questions. <laughs> I'm, I'm extremely grateful to have the continuity with Kirby for year two. I think he did an outstanding job in a very tough, challenging situation last year. Um, anybody who's ever got come in and tried to call plays with a, a head coach who's on that side of the ball, there are good days and bad days, and the mistakes feel magnified because, you know, the guy who's in charge and Kirby handled it so well all year. Not only did he run it the way he saw fit, um, he adopted the things that we felt like were really good, and he didn't have any type of ego about it. But he was very strong in the things that he knew that he felt convicted about. And I think it made for, for uh, a very good offensive style of football. Um, he had a great way with leading our offensive team, um, those guys buying in to who he was as a leader. You know, he was able to uh, get a group of men who had worked with a previous coordinator and previous people, and he just was consistent in who he was on a daily basis. And those guys gelled and coached with him, I think, at a really, really high level. Um, so to carry that continuity is really um, exciting. And I'm, I'm, I'm thankful that, that him and Kayla chose to still be at Mizzou. Um, I think the challenge for him is no different than the wide receiver room. Um, the challenge is, what do you focus on to improve? And what do you say no to? We can't do everything, and we don't need to do everything. We need to focus on what is it exactly that we need to do to improve, and what are those one or two things, and how do I say no to all the noise? Because sometimes when you have this much experience coming back, you think, well, I can do this, I can do this, I can do this. So he's going to have a real challenge 
uh, with that. And then he's going to have a challenge with making sure that people don't think spring means, well, we're pretty good and we'll just show up in August. I think the reality of it is that's kind of what our defense did last year, um, rolling into the, about the first five games. And so we, we're going to have to have a healthy foot uh, in the backside of making sure that there is no complacency on what we're trying to accomplish this season. Because last year has nothing to do with this year.